Ninja, it's been a while. Hi, Jenny. It's really wonderful to be here in your lair, Thanks. overlooking Hollywood. It's, uh, we've come a long way, my friend. The first time I met you was not too far from here in Hollywood. I remember the we Roosevelt. were in a, in, a, in, in a diner mm. in the Roosevelt. And uh, I never would have predicted this future for you, and yet it makes complete sense. So, uh, Chappie, this beautiful film by director Neil Blomkamp. This is basically, this is the Antwort movie. This is all about you and, and Yolandi and this universe that you, that you inhabit with your work. It's a robot movie that's not a robot movie at all. There's this kind of beautiful transcendental movie that, that goes way beyond uh, a robot action film. And yet, it's a very entertaining robot action film. Yeah, it's such a sick sci-fi. Like Neil and Terry wrote it, it's like it's a cool. F it is it's got a cool. It's a. It's like a. Re it's like a sci-fi that's not re really a sci-fi, but it's. It's like yeah. kind of super close to like now. It's like almost like, but it's very it's, near future. Yeah, but it's such a it's like sick <laughs> fucking sci-fi. So I remember uh, when I met you early on, you and Yolandi were really into Blumkamp's film District 9. You felt like you really identified with it. And at the, at the screening the other night, you said something about how you felt like this was a, like it was a very African film. It was a very South African film. What did you mean by that? Well, oh, it's just sh District 9. Mm -hmm. It was just cause like, it's like we've seen, like I think we've grown up. I think there's a movie called The Gods Must Be Crazy by Jamie it. Ace, yeah. which was like, when we saw it when we were young and we were like, they were, we didn't really register that. That was just like this cool film. Like we didn't think anything of it. It was just like the guys must be crazy. We almost didn't even know that it was, this is a ridiculous thing to say, but we didn't even know it was African or made by a South African. Yeah. Because it was done so good. Right. And it was by this a director, Jamie Ace, who's like an old school South African director. But like since then, usually like South African films and like there's just, they okay or like but there's always like oh it's a south african film and then also with music we're always like oh it's like oh they're in a it's like a south african band and it always means like like kind of b grade or not you know like c <laughs> or d grade and then the, when we always thought like we want our music to be like fucking like not south african music we want to make music that's like but then we thought, actually, yeah, fuck, make a South African music, but make it like better than fucking anything <laughs> in the world, like anywhere. Like, and then we like, we're leaning into that theme just on our own little isolated insular fucking setup. Mm -hmm. And then Neil, then District Nine came out, and it was the same thing. Like, Jesus Christ, no, not the same thing. We're just like, so completely, entirely like, fucked up, shocked that it was like you're seeing South Africa, this place that you know, like presented to you, and just like. Like literally, like I'm a film like psycho fanatic, and like George Lucas and all that shit. With us, like you know, it's like in Terminator 2 when you're young, all these things like blow you away, mm -hmm. and then this new fucking thing comes out, set in a South African terrain. It's flat out. It's like a South African film, but it's like this new, like kind of mind fuck of a film because it's punk. It's so hard and so raw, and like the see the effects are like just better than anyone, but because yeah. they're in the... It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's just so like completely just fucked this up. It was like completely, it's just like, did I blew up right? Like I never, I didn't even know I could get so shocked. I didn't know I could get, I thought you only get so freaked out by a movie when you like, when I saw Terminator 2 when I was like a teenager, that was, I was like, oh my God, that's the best film I've ever seen in my life. Ah, like you walk out of the fucking film like tripping out. And then the same thing happened with District 9. We were just like, it's like it just completely haunted us and blew my like our brains out of ass, and then we just like, like obsessed with Neil since then. And, and I, then I remember that the depth of your obsession was so intense and the depth of your devotion that you inked yeah, an homage. Did you see that? I said that's D9. I was like, I need to stick that on my fucking body somewhere. <laughs> what was his reaction when you showed him? Awesome. <laughs> I was just like, he was so cool. And then he wrote us, I was just telling you the thing before, yeah. he wrote us an email, but every, when, just as we blew up, everyone was writing us emails and people were pretending to be other people. And then we was like, N Neil Blomkamp's like, it's not Neil Blomkamp. And then, he's, and then it turned out that it was him. And then we met him, he came to a show in Canada, he, he's living there. Yeah. And then we're just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like we couldn't like, 
we met all these different pe famous people, but that was just like, fuck. And we just started talking and talking and talking and talking shit about, for like ages, for, about just random bullshit. And then, so yeah, we should do something. It was like obvious we should do something because it was right. like, and then he kind of, when Neil spoke to us, I, like I didn't actually fully get it till I saw Chappie, how Neil, like how hard he, he gets us. Right. Like he gets us like, like, you know, and then uh, it only sunk in like after I watched it, like he had like, that film, Chappie's been like three years been putting wow. together for. Really? Been, yeah, developing, or putting it together for three years. And then I think two years ago or something, we shot a short with Neil in South Africa. And, and then it just turned into this thing now, but it's like really like, it was quite a process. How did it begin? I mean, it began with your friendship, but how did the, the discussion of the, of, of what we can now see as this finished feature, how did, how did where was the seed of that? Well, there was a weird thing. This was we're doing music, and then like we and like focused on music, and that's our like main thing. And True. Neil like loves music. Everyone loves music, but Neil likes like this type of he like like he loves he like prides himself in like digging like shit rave, really crap, like the worst kind of rave. And we're like, yeah, that's our shit, like <laughs> shit rave. But we make it like we like lean into it's some. It's a kind of a like bad as in like Michael Jackson bad kind of, but you know, that's what even Zeph means. It means yeah. like kind of shit, but like, like dope at the same time. It's like, like really weird, good junk food. Kind of, I don't know. It's like a, it's like the worst style. It's so fucking bad that it's like the illest shit in the world. Like kind of <laughs> like, like bad Russian rave. We just think of like, where's the worst, most clueless, worst <laughs> fucking shittest rave ever and be like, mm. That's the business. That's the dope shit. Yeah. So then Neil was, we were chatting with Neil, and then uh, the short version is like, this movie thing started coming up. As we got to LA, like everyone was like trying to put, do TV shows and put us in films with it, and then David Fincher asked Yolani to be in the Go With The Dragon Tattoo I movie, and that. she was like, shit, that's crazy, David Fincher, like he's so sick, you know, and like Fight Club and all these like films, and it was like, shit, she can't do this now. It's like not the right time. And then in the same, like after Neil said he's doing a new film called Elysium and asked me to star in it. And then I was just like, Jesus Christ, like totally. I like, oh. and then he flew here and we did this little, uh, like a camera test and like it was all full on going forward. And then we are in the middle of our second album and then me and Yolandi started, I, I was like, and Yolandi was like, this timing's weird. And I was also feeling weird that the ca I had to shave my head and talk an American accent. And I was thinking, fucking this, all our warning bells were going, this is like, the wrong thing to do now. And I, I was like, fuck, but I love Neil. It's like, I'm so, and I was like, caused a lot of tension over a few days with us. And then we were thinking that's like, not the right thing to do. And I called Neil and I was like, dude, I fucking, I can't, like, I want, uh, this is weird news, but I just told him straight, like, I'm gonna blow up and be on a fucking billboard as like this actor, weird new actor guy. And then I'm in this little weird band. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, that's gonna just overshadow what we're doing and it just feels I don't want to do a South Africa um, our identity is like quite like we're not really interested in anything except the Antwoord so Neil like straight after I said I said no about the like I didn't say no I was like I can't do it like, I want to do it more than anything it was really hectic to say no like and he said he understood completely we're on the exact same like we he, Neil's like a flat out artist yeah. he directs anything but he's like straight artist like the, the directing things like an, another uh, it's like an element of a pure like fine artist whatever like the uh, artist of the highest order so then he said okay what do you he said what do you guys want to do like do you want to what, what would you like i dig to do something what are you interested in doing so i was just like can we do, like i don't know because we want to do something together. It was like this thing to do something together. But we didn't know, and I said, can we just, just like, we just, can we, we just interested in being ourselves and whatever we do. And he said, okay, it's interesting, it's interesting. And then he went away and then came and said, oh, I've got this idea of like, you guys having a robotic son that you raise. And I was like, and I've got this, and he started telling us this idea, and you star as yourselves, and you know, maybe, are you interested? And then we were like, like, we, like, it sounded like almost like, oh, t like too good to be true. It was like, right. 
yes, fucking <laughs> obvious. That's like the fucking best shit in the world. And then it just went through a whole bunch of processes, like everyone like paranoid that we, like the the, the people are paying for the movie, just for good reason, worried yeah. that we're not going to be um, articulate and understandable. And then even the film, when I see Chappie now, it's like, it's quite shocking that like, we, it's like a, it's fucking weird because it's fucked up raw. It's raw as fuck. It's like raw as anything we've ever done. It's like crazy. It's, it's this raw blockbuster. <laughs> That's a perfect way to say it. And it's like, it's punk as fuck, okay, but I it's just still blockbuster. Okay, when, when, I, when I was sitting in the theater watching the film, I was trying to wrap my head around the aesthetic of the film. And about halfway through, I realized this reminds me of watching like a Nollywood feature on cable TV in Ghana. This reminds so me- so hard. This reminds me of like hard, indigenous African cinema. But like E.T. fucking Terminator 2 fucking yes. Avatar kind of boom, 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 this blockbuster hit, yes. hits. It's so sick. And, and then at the same time, when we're talking about that rawness and that kind of strange homegrown African continent quirkiness, like there was never a moment that my belief in the realness the robotic characters was suspended. There was never a moment when I doubted that belief. Dude, I tripped out watching it when we watched, because we saw it before once, like, you know, in that nervous, like, we were sitting alone, sure. and the two of us in the, like, Sony studio, me and Yolandi going, like, oh my God, okay. <sighs> okay, and, like, they push play, and then it's like, and then at certain times in the film, like, I'm watching this shit going, like, you know, like, Okay, I said, fuck, I'm in the film. Like, I know what the fuck's happening. It's a fucking CG thing I'm watching. And I'm totally getting, like, anxious. I was like, yeah. like, and I'm in the movie. And then I cried at the fucking end in the film. That I'm, yeah. It's like, it's so nuts, you know? And I remember at, at the private screening, uh, just maybe 40 people in the theater. One of them was your, your beautiful daughter, yeah, shame. 16. She tripped so 16 out. actually had to leave the theater because she was so sad to see Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Well, it's, Sucking. And she's like, Daddy, why is it so horrible? Aww. She's like, you're so nasty. I was like, why are you being horrible the whole time? Chappy. She said that? Yeah, that fucked her up. She's like, you're such a dick. Like, she didn't say I'm a dick. She's like, you're so, she doesn't swear. She's like, you're so nasty. And she's like, because I was just like, yeah. Neil was just pumping me to be this like fucking asshole the whole time. And I remember when you got up to speak to the screening audience before the film, you know, you're, you pepper your language with four-letter words. As well, I don't even notice I'm doing yeah, but, but your daughter got up and she said, my speech will have no swearing. Yeah. <laughs> she's so cute. Yolandi, like, she's like, just because she'll be telling a story and then say, yeah, and she said, and she'll say B instead of bitch, whatever, and, like, and she won't swear, like, since birth. Like, what a princess. No, she just refuses. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, he's like, just swear, just tell the story. And she's like, no. And she's like, no, she's just like, she refuses to swear. She's like, it's so whack. And My other, parents like, swear the whole time. And, like, and the other beautiful thing, <laughs> she, she said right after that, she said, you know, I'm really proud of my mom and dad. They weren't always good rappers, but they've really developed. <laughs> they weren't always very good at rapping. I really feel good about how they've developed. <laughs> what the hell? It's just like, she's so random. Yeah, I, like, love I was her. like, oh, thanks, 16. But, cool. but she I'm glad. <laughs> she was I'm... deeply, deeply moved and deeply caught up in the realness of, of that character and, and of the movie. And I think that, you know, I, I, think, well. I think when a child is carried away like that, that really says something about the power of a work of art, doesn't it? Yeah, for big grown-ups carried away like that, that's yeah. even more. Because kids get caught up in, like, fucking Disneyland, sure. you know? They, but, like, when a... But when you and I... Yeah, when, like, a, a damn grown man with tattoos on his face cries in, in his own movie. It's like, yeah. it's kind of weird. But it's like, I mean, like as well, it's so weird that it, it does, it puts like this spell, on, it's just like an instant spell. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's just weird. Like again, it's like, it's, it's like a foreign film, or like, mm. a, like a fucking art film, blockbuster. <laughs> It's it's so dope that mix. That's what's make even like with when we drop a music video, we always like do our like our like driving force is that it's surprising to us, which means it needs to be original. Like that we've never seen some before. So we like <gasps> like shocked by like 
oh, this is so fresh. And we've never, that's like our kick. But we didn't do it for anything else, just that kick. I'm like, fuck, this is sick. And we've got no idea what's gonna happen when you drop it. Cause it's so, there's no, like, it's like nothing. And this film's also, I'm like, I've got no cooking clue what the hell. And I don't really care. It's just like, it's like more for me. It's just like, it's, I just kept on saying to you, Lenny, when you're watching it for something, like, it's so fucking good. I was like, oh, fuck. It's so fucking good. I was waiting. I was like, is this gonna, it doesn't wane. It's just like, yeah. cause sometimes films kick off for like, right. you know, 100 miles an hour for like 30 minutes and then they, right. And then this just stays like until the last boom. It's crazy. No, no spoilers, but man, that that closing scene. Yeah, it's fucking beautiful, nuts. beautiful, beautiful, and it hints, it hints at the possibility of a continuation of this story. That's Neil's style. I Same with it. District Nine. You know, it's like when's District Ten? <laughs> Fifty million dollar Antwerp film directed by Neil Blomkamp. It's like. What the fuck just happened? And then with all like Hugh Jackman so fucking ill. He's like such an awkward villain. He's oh like, my god, he's the such, mullet, the 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 He's so the awkward, he's so rad. Like it's so like <laughs> usually he's like, like this dashing yeah. like like this hero guy and he's like this funny fucking it's so cool. Like Neil yeah. I like Neil makes things like ugly but like dope. Like yes. even and like um Sigourney Weaver? Yeah, she's like this, uh, you know, it's so, everyone's so fucking rad. Like, and Sigourney Weaver, you drop it, like, it's just, it's just like, it was all these oh, costs, and then he said, and Sigourney Weaver's and we're like, oh my God, it's like sci-fi, like, whoosh. Like, you just got that, like, the cherry on the top like, of the like cake. Even like, she's the illest. Just her presence yeah, it's brings like, in Alien. Yeah, and he does it, like, and, but she's also, everyone's like grim, and like, she's a fucking operating, like a corporation, like with yeah. his fucking, his arms corporation, so sick, like, yeah. and Dev Patel's like fucking sick, he's so like, he's incredible. He's got no brakes on, even when yeah. we're acting, he's just like, <laughs> he just, like, he's so, he's like this, like, mental kid, he just go, he just went like, Fully invested. He just, he just doesn't even, he's like that. He's also like, hey, yeah, ninja, you go, yeah. yeah. And then he has to be the scientist. Okay, now he's a scientist. <laughs> Could you imagine doing more films? Yeah, but if they like, as, again, a prerequisite is it needs that, uh, we don't put ourselves into anything that's not like, like, you know, really, you know, like set your fucking soul on fire, like you're like doing it like, I don't know, like a fucking David Lynch film or something like, or something like that's just like the best, or like if Chris Cunningham did a fucking feature film yeah. of like, it needs to be for us, it needs to be like the best shit in the whole fucking world, like that I'm gonna like, can't even fucking believe this is happening. I mean, Otherwise a, we can't do it. In a way, like what you're saying sounds like to, to me, every choice that you've made creatively, uh, any act, has to be integrated with the whole, you know, like any any new little project that you do that might involve somebody like a Neil Blomkamp or a good David Lynch or a Chris Cunningham or whatever, it has to be integrated with the whole of what you do. You're not just, um, it's not you're, you're not like an actor or a director for hire, you know, or you're not just a producer for hire. You have this thing. It's like this mothership of what you do, what you've created, this universe, it's like a living universe that has to be fed. But the, uh, at the same time, as I told Neil, while we were shooting, um, during, um, shooting Chappie, mm -hmm. I also said, like, we just hadn't got to a level where we wanted, we, we were still like the, like a little sapling, we, we felt like a little sapling, and it was just like a seed sprout, and it's like this small little thing was coming out. And now with the chappy, by the time the chappy things come out, this thing's like, you can't cut it now. That's it's right. like, we've solid, and now it's going, it's gonna start doing other things now. The yeah. roots are fucking, you can't pull them out. That shit's just like a <laughs> demonic, like fucking growth. It'll break through the sidewalk now, and you cannot fuck with the weed now. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, so now I told Neil, now, yeah. now the chappies drop, we, we're a group, we solid, we got like fucking three albums, I'm busy on our fourth album. Mm. We tour all over the fucking world. It's like sold out, sold out, so it's like a thing's growing and carrying on doing its thing. We not pop up in this feature form as ourselves. It's fucking solid. I told Neil, for you and very, 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 very few other people who I'm like a psycho fan of, I'll flip mode, I'll be anyone yeah. for you. Me and Yolandi as well, well, we'll do whatever, but because we established now as in, in, in a, at a level, so like on some 
big high level. This is like a thick fucking unstoppable, like mm. like the kind of rats that are like have infested the city kind of level that they can will take over when when it, whenever we want because it's so like you know that's the kind of level we're interested in. Um, not like a you know I'm so fucking famous type of like high level. It's more it, like we can hang out with whoever the fuck you know we're at a fucking party this weekend. It's fucking like Oprah's there, like Denzel Washington, and like Robert De Niro, and like Jesus Christ, and like LL Cool J, and like, right. I'm like whoa you know <laughs> like what the fuck just happened but it's like but as well we'll go hang in ghettos and fucking carry on you know putting on rhymes that are from like you know so we hang yeah. high low whatever like it's like it's, it's all the same world it's, isn't it's it? whatever it's just it's the same shit we just the same we're doing the same thing as we always done and but at the same time our theme is like there's this Buddhist quote that they say that the only, like I was I was into underground rap at the time, I was like, keep it real, the real and 90s rap and like, you know, this term real, I was just like obsessed, like, you know, keeping it real, not fronting and being yourself and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I heard this Buddhist quote that said, the only real things in life are the unexpected things and everything else is just delusion. And I was just like, fuck, that's our theme. Like our, our theme is like, and it's funny that people said, is it real the whole time when we came? I was yes. like, yeah, more than your whole fucking life. Because <laughs> you don't expect, it's unexpected. That's our theme. And like, we don't know, want to know what's going to happen next. We, like, it's, that's the coolest shit, you know? That it's unpredictable and unexpected. And that's what's so juicy about it for us. And why, where, where we get our kick from. Ninja, what was the most unexpected element of making this massive film with Neil Blomkamp. What was, what surprised you most in that experience? So fucking ill Neil is that he like this at the end, just like was so fucking, did he went through like shit to keep that shit so raw? That he has, that was like a fucking three year fight mixed with like <sighs> making the dopest film and you can't just make a dope film like that. Like so, you know how fucking raw that shit is, sorry for saying it over again, but he had to fight for his right to party like that. Like, <laughs> that's like, and at the end I was just like, fuck, it's, it's not just perfect, I was like mind fucked. I was like, and I'm in the fucking thing. It's like the exact same feeling we get when we finish a dope track, mm -hmm. when we finish a fucking whole album that took a year to make, whatever, or we finish like, fucking music video that we like we were feeling nauseous about like if it's gonna work or not mm -hmm. and then Neil just pulls off this fucking most powerful pretty much the most powerful move we ever were involved with <laughs> and it's just Hans Zimmer doing a fucking he usually works with orchestras doing like a flat out at Neil asked him to do like an electronic full-on synthesizer like Blade Runner-esque yeah. kind of theme music driving the fucking film the whole fucking time like this. And every time that score cuts out, there's a fucking unfold track. I'm like, Jesus, there's a track again. And then it's like back into the fucking when the type he sees the fucking and like it's just a fucking and it's just from beginning to end. The most surprising shit is that it's fucking flawless. It's like impossible. It's in, I can't even fucking believe it. Yeah. But still now I'm like, I can't fucking believe it. Just that Neil's so fucking ill. And that he's like a warrior, you know, you have to, you don't just pull off shit like that by being a little, like a little, little cocksucker director. He's like, a, he's like an artist director, like a fucking boss. He's a fucking boss. He's just like, well, you have to fight. I mean, in this, in Hollywood. And no in ego, not ego, just for his fucking film, not yeah. like for his shit, you know, he's just like, <laughs> art. Like you, he has a very specific idea of what he wants to create and he, he won't compromise. And he's such a good director, like how he, like he is, I don't just say he's a good director, I can direct and he's like fucking, you me and you like this dude direct so fucking, he gets in a spell, like he's in a trance, he tells you like, Everything he's saying is like, oh, then come, okay, no, 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 no. I'm like, I'm teaching 
Chappie how to fucking kill people and fucking do stuff in Chappie. He's like, no, no, teach him like you're playing like a, teaching a kid a game, like, you know, because Chappie won't do that. So just teach him like how you, like, this is like playing, are you gonna go fucking rob a fucking whoever? It's like, oh no, but you're gonna go play like cops and robbers, you know? And I'm like, you need to be like this with Chappie. I'm like, okay, okay. It's like, oh, I could never think of that shit. Like every time he'd tell us to do something, like, fuck, it's cool. Like he's just like, every time he'd put us in another, because I've got a natural directional mind and I'm going, I'm doing everything like as a direct, I'm thinking, oh, I should like trying to direct. And I ended up for the first time in my life, I had to like force myself a few times, like, fucking stop doing that. Like, ninja, stop it. Like, stop, just fucking shut up and listen. I was like, okay, shut up and listen. Hmm. And then I had to, and then I find, it took me a few, I had a few glitches where I'd like, and then I was like, okay, shh. And then I just shut up, shut the fuck up and just did what he said. And it was like, and I was doing shit that I'd never thought of. And it's so like, like refreshing and cool. And like, whoa, I took a holiday from myself and then saw this like, Jesus, is that me? Like, whoa, cool. Yeah. And like this kind of like, like adorable asshole. <laughs> Cause it's like, you quite dig this guy. He says, what a fucking, this guy sucks ass, but you want to see what he's going to do next. He's such a dick. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I wonder what, like you want to see him teach the fucking robot to be a gangster. Although it's like, he's being a fucking cunt. And I was like, oh, you know, it's a, such a weird style. You don't see like, vi like uh, villains who you dig, but you fucking hate them as well. It's like a weird thing, you know? What surprised me most about the film was how funny it was. Yeah, Neil's and you got guys that don't thing like, down. Yeah. There's no comedy. Yeah. It's fuck all comedy, but it's like fucking hilarious. It's actually really hilarious. It's yeah. not a comedy. But he said in the beginning, he's like, he's going to make a sci-fi comedy. And we're like, mm-hmm. Like With shit's... you. Yeah, well, we don't, <laughs> like, we, we don't do comedy, but we're fucking funny by accident the whole time. Because we just always want to, we're always being surprised and making jokes and, like, dark jokes all the time. And then Yolandi, she's so fucking sweet in the form also, Doug, because mm. she she's got a pit bull called Angel, a white pit bull, and she always, we're doing this, like, the stuff for the film, the, like, rehearsals and stuff, and doing our lines and everything with Neil, and, like, and running through them before, and then I went to Yolandi's house, and then she called it, she'll be like, um, Angel, hey, oh, Angel, and you know, her voice is, like, higher than any, like, <laughs> fucking vo person's voice and history of voices. And she's like, oh, he's so cute, Angel. And she's speaking in this high pitch. And I was like, dude, you should speak. You have to fucking, because no one's heard her speak like that. And I was like, you must speak to the, the robot like that. That's so cool. And then she started going, oh, that'd be chappy. Oh, is that a show? And started speaking to Angel, to the robot, like she talks to a, a pit bull. And everyone's like, oh, on set. Everyone was like, when she does her takes, everyone's like, oh. You're like, he's so cool and cute. And like, she's like, you know, she's this like fucking little punk demon pixie. On, mm. But then on the film, he made her so like, go into this motherly, sweet, gorgeous, like she, also fully. She's sort of like the holy mother though. Yeah, she's, she's like, so this, like this universal mom. Yeah, she's just like, oh, you're Landy, there she is again. Kind of like love and compassion. Yeah, I'm just this fucking asshole. <laughs> so cool. I love being an asshole. Really suits Why me. is it fun to be an asshole? Because I just am. It's just fun. I just don't care about anything. It's nice not to care. <laughs> what do you want to do that you haven't done? I'm um, snowboard or go into the snow. Except Flea just did that and broke his freaking arm. Now he can't play bass for a while. Well, you He's... don't want to break your arm, but snowboarding sounds fun. We're just going into the snow. I haven't been into like thick, like the snow in the hill. I haven't mm. been into snow before. Really? Wonder, mm -mm. Wow. I'm from Africa. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> I don't have snow there. Uh-uh. So even we've seen snow a few times, I was like, oh, whoa, snow. It's like, wow, oh, it's white. Uh, what about space, if you could go up on, like, Virgin I'd rather swim something? with dolphins. Have you done that yet? No. I have. It's fucking yeah. amazing. That was, oh that's my more God, it's amazing. fun for me. And here in Los Angeles, we're just a matter of hours away from Hawaii, and the whole yeah. universe, the whole universe of the ocean is just off the coast. I want to swim with dolphins. You can do that. Yeah. It can be done. Yeah. Well, Ninja, I really appreciate you letting us tag along for a little bit more of the wild ride of your life, and I can't wait to, to revisit this when something else something, the, the next turn that you take. I, I can't imagine what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be awesome. Yeah. 
Me neither. <laughs> I, also, I also don't know what the hell is happening with anything. I'm fucking into it. We are too. Cool, Jenny. Thank you. Jenny. Thank you.